Aloha. Welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We're coming to you from Waikiki Beach. Today we have a really good friend of ours, Dr. Scott French, who will be with us. He lives on the big island, uh, the baby island, who's throwing a little bit of a tantrum right now with the volcanic uh, lava flow that's going on. We'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Kickstart that engine and roll thunder with the pack. Explore the grittiness of manly spirituality. Gain traction in the virtues. Zoop up your spiritual engine by turning adversity into adventure. Now here's Bear Wozniak. Let's ride. Aloha. Welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I'm your adventure guide, Bear Wozniak. Today we're going to have with us Dr. Scott French. He actually lives on the baby island. And right now the baby island, the big island, the island of Hawaii, is having a little bit of a temper tantrum. We have lava flows and, uh, and volcanic ash that flows um, rather regularly from the Kilauea volcano. But Mauna Loa is having a little bit of a temper tantrum. And there's been high geysers of lava and a, a large lava flow occurring. Living here in Waikiki Beach, we're actually about 200 miles away from where Mauna Loa is. Uh, we, so we haven't even felt any tremors even from any earthquake uh, here. But what happens is when the volcano erupts and the ash plume kind of goes off, off to sea, sometimes, normally we have trade winds here that keep the air fresh and clean, blowing right over the ocean and over the island. And, but every now and then the, the winds turn Kona. Kona is a town near the volcano and uh, on the big island. And when the winds turn around and come from that area, there's kind of a humidity in the air. It's when we get our kind of heavy rains. And also when the volcano is blowing, it brings us vog, which I guess you can surmise is volcanic fog. And I want, and, and you know, it gets kind of stuck in your throat and uh, it just, your eyes kind of water a little bit. And and uh, you, you look out at the ocean and we, we, we see boats out there, but we call them ghost ships because you can barely see them because of the vog. And I'm just wondering to what degree in our in our lives here in this day and age when we're experiencing a bit of that vog in terms of what is truth. Uh, we're, we're, we've lost so much clarity in that area uh, that we need to go back and ask ourselves that question that that uh, Pilate satirically asked Jesus when he said, I guess the word is quid est veritas, what is truth? And here truth was standing right in front of him because Jesus said I am which is the which is the uh, short uh, version of I am who am which is God the Father's name Yahweh Jesus name is I am who am salvation his name Yahshua is a contraction of the name Yahweh Yahweh uh, is salvation so Jesus is the truth he says I am using his father's using the name I am I am truth that is one of his names. And so we've got Dr. Scott French with us here. He's kind of shy, very reserved. So hope that you can uh, can bear with us as we try to encourage him somehow to communicate with us from the Big Island. Hey, Dr. Scott French, welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Thank, thanks, Bear, but I'm too shy to actually say anything right now. So. <laughs> <laughs> You're the one guy I know I can count on not to have to. I don't. I won't have to prod you. Hey, listen, what, what's going on over there? I know the volcano is kind of quieting down a little bit, but tell us about what what the the uh, the big show that Mauna Loa put, has been putting on. Yeah, an amazing big show right off the road. Uh, but again, it point as as you said, it points to a couple things. Number one, that God's in charge of planet Earth, <laughs> and God's God's in charge of life and death, and um, and also as you said, you know, the vog stings your eyes. Um, you know, so so it remind us we have to see the truth, right? Because like you said, Pontius Pilate was looking at the truth, yeah. and then also you get respiratory uh, distress. It causes asthma in a lot of people. As a physician, you know, we see that is where um, people get, um, particularly at night, because it settles down at the upper elevations. And so uh, when mm. the volcanoes are erupting, a lot of people have asthma problems at night. But let's talk uh, about the beauty of the pictures that you've been sending me. You've been taking pictures of the volcano at night. Uh, yeah, it, it is amazingly gorgeous. Uh, and uh, when it first erupted, I was in one of the first few days, 
uh, doing and it was a line of cars i mean the entire ireland of hawaii was there it, it is just incredibly beautiful um it's slowing down a little bit now but just it's you see the lava flow you see the toe of the volcano um and it's right off the road that what's called the saddle road that goes from the east side to the west side and it's just it's just magnificent well let me ask you this question okay so like the way i know there's something serious happening in the islands okay like when people are going oh no we need to be prepared for something is you go to the grocery store and the true litmus test litmus test of whether there's a real whether the people here are really worried and they're stocking up on all their supplies is if the shelf of spam is empty (laughs) <laughs> is the spam all gone in the in the grocery stores or is it still well stocked that i mean that that's that's the main way you know there's a problem yeah yeah and, and people are not they're not worried again it, as you know with the last with the last eruption they were saying that oahu was uh, having volcanic activity and so um and I, as someone told me that they heard a news saying that uh, half of Hawaii was going to crack in half or something. I so, know we got so, so many other messages. people are excited about it. But, yeah. Well, when we've so. had, you know, every now and then we get a tsunami warning here and everybody drives up to the tan- Tantalus or up into the hills. And it's a big party up there. Uh, but um, everyone first stops in and gets their spam just in case. Right. So right. Uh, I know we yeah. have a whole stockpile of spam here because when the tourists are here in Waikiki and there's a problem like that. All the restaurants shut down, all the stores shut down, and I just give them give out cans of spam. So, you know, I was going to sing. I have my ukulele here, um, but I just could not remember the chords fast enough to sing that song I love that Jimmy Buffett does. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know where I'm going to go when the volcano blows. <laughs> and it's a little bit like uh, a message to us to be prepared to, to, uh, to get serious about life. And, uh, and that's why that's the conversation that we want to have today. We're experiencing utter confusion uh, amongst some people in the world today. Everything that was that it's like the Bible says that which was called evil will be called good and that which is called good will be called evil. Everything's being flipped upside down. There doesn't seem to be anything, by the way, anymore. The, the word sexual depravity doesn't even seem to be to exist anymore. It's like anything goes. So, Dr. Scott French, before we get rolling, I know that you're you're a, you're an emergency uh, physician. You with, uh, and I also know that you're instrumental in working with uh, with uh, the Magis Center with Father Robert Spitzer. So I don't you know. You can see I've got his books right behind me here someplace. <laughs> um, and so, can you give us just a little bit of background of who you are? Because as we dig into this, I want people to know what. Uh, what street cred you have to communicate about things like this? So um, I'm an emergency physician and worked all over. Um, I'm GPS challenged. As you said, I have a place on the whole big Highland, but I'm always traveling. I was just in Florida the other couple of days. So I, I give a lot of talks for the Mag- Magis Center uh, about the Shroud of Turin Eucharistic Miracles because the, the long and short of it is um, about uh, 10, 15 years ago, I started noticing that we had an increase in suicides in our children, mm. uh, drug overdoses and stuff. And I'm talking about nine year olds and 11 year olds and, you know, 13 year olds, not teenagers. You know, there's always been that issue with you know, adolescence. Um, and so um, I prayed over it. I, you know, eventually realized that as a doctor, I'm not in charge really of when people live or die. And so I, basically one day um uh, said to said to god said look you got to fix this <laughs> you we got to get in front of this because by the time they see me you know it's, they were already in despair and all that what's going on and, and studies have shown they did a study just came out from 20 2000 uh, i think it's 2005 to 2017 there was a 50 50 percent five zero percent increase in suicides uh suicide attempts by young by young people it's just it's it's horrible and with covid uh, year over year for adolescent girls from 2020 to 2021, they went up 50%. So what's going on? We got all this great entertainment and all that, you know, so what's going on? So I, you know, I pray to God, we got to get in front of this. What's going on? Um, and, you know, <laughs> the end of the story, it's, it's, we're in a spiritual battle over truth. And so what happened is um, I ended up going to, um, uh, we ended up going to the Shroud of Turin, which was opened up uh, in 2015 for viewing. And I'd always heard it was a medieval forgery and all this. And and so we went there. My wife and I was also a physician. And we went there 
And um, when you see it in person, I'm going, uh, no, <laughs> that's that's the image, perfect image of a uh, of a Jewish rabbi. Uh, that no, that's not a medieval forgery. And so I started doing uh, research on the internet. And as you know, uh, Dr. Google is sometimes accurate, sometimes not accurate. And uh, yes. and I and I started finding out that gosh, you know, there's there is evidence, but it seemed like no one knew that. And so. Holy Spirit led me to Father Spitzer because yeah, we I'm love. Like, oh, finally, someone who, who knows about this. Yeah, we, we love yeah. Father Robert Spitzer, don't we? Don't we just love him? Uh, when I was yeah. at the Napa He's Institute, amazing. about yeah. uh, when I was at the Napa yeah. Institute about four years ago, I brought my cigars, Bears Man Cave, the Seven Virtue Cigar, cigars, and that I I. I provided them with cigars and they let us show our TV show. It was kind of like a trade yeah. there. Um, yeah. And and Father Robert Spitzer sat next to me, you know, and had a, one of my cigars with me. And I started talking about how much I love his book. And, you know, he was the president of Gonzaga. So the professor right. in him comes out and he starts giving me a pop quiz on his books. But I, I loved his presentation <laughs> on the Shroud. And he yeah. talks about the Shroud of Turin in, in – uh, in uh, his books as well, and uh, so yeah. we're going to get come back with Dr. Scott French, and we're going to talk more about the crisis of truth. This is the Bear Wozniak adventure. Now you can journey with other men on the adventure of a lifetime, growing in manly virtue through Bear's Man Cave Community in our three-year school of manliness. Join at DeepAdventure.com. Better yet. You can lead your own sons through the same compelling video, audio, and written content. Can you imagine how much deeper your relationship with your dad could have been and how much more you could have learned and pitfalls you might have avoided if your dad had a tool like this to help to draw you both into a deeper, life-changing discussion? Now you have a trigger that you can pull that will take you into gritty discussions with other men and with your sons at deepadventure.com. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for underwriting the Bear Wozniak Adventure on EWTN. Notre Dame Federal Credit Union provides car loans, mortgages, SBA loans, and depository accounts nationwide, as well as 24-hour support. Go to deepadventure.com to find their link or go to notredamefcu.com. Mahalo to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for making the Bear Wozniak adventure possible. You can gain traction in the virtues in my book, Deep Adventure, The Way of Heroic Virtue. And you can be inspired by my personal testimony of heartache and triumph with my book, A Surfing Guide to the Soul, both newly published by Sophia and available at our web store, deepadventure.com and also on Amazon.com. This is a warning. The Bear Wozniak adventure is dangerous. The radical change Bear challenges you to is not for wimps. Change this station now to a soft rock station before it's too late. You've been warned. Now, here is Bear Wozniak. Aloha, welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. For you, those of you who are lucky enough to be watching this version of uh, using the watching the YouTube version of our radio show, you get to see Dr. Scott French, and you get to see me wearing my Catholic. Uh, my my hat that my baseball cap that says Catholic original, established thirty three A D, and uh, I think we're going to have these on our on our on our web store at deepadventure dot com. So check it out if you'd like to get one of these hats. But it's a pretty cool hat. Uh, but that that's that is the essence of what we're talking about here is is what is truth. What it, what where do we go to to find truth? I know if you look at the you know you, you look at the traditional. The classical, not even classical, the, the, the philosophers, uh, Socrates, Plato, Aristotle, a lot of good solid stuff there. You see Augustine uh, synthesizing 
Plato and uh, Thomas Aquinas taking the, the the thinking approach of Aristotle and synthesizing it because um, truth is truth. You know, whether it's philosophical truth or it's the truth about the rules to a football game or, or the rules of, of science, truth is truth, and uh, and uh, it, it, they can't be in conflict with each other. And so, what? It, but what is the truth about uh, our human anthropology? How we are made? Who made us? What purpose do we have? What is our? What is our? What is the uh, the uh, the reason that we that we exist, who created us, uh, all of those things have been just thrown out, and it's as if uh, each of us is our own god and carries our own truth. You hear people say things like, "Well, we have so and so as a guest on our radio show today, and we want to know, uh, uh, Betty, what is your what is your truth about this matter?" As if there's different versions of the truth, and so we have Dr. Scott French here, and he's going to talk with us ab about. Uh, the crisis of truth. What what do you see happening today, Scott? Well, so let's go back to what you said earlier about, uh, I think it's really important to re actually read the words that are in John 18, because in reality, truth is reality. And that's what's happened. We've lost reality. If you lose truth, you lose reality. And that's really what's going on. And then, and, and then again, with COVID, uh, it's that's in Hebrews 2 14 through 15 fear of death is from Satan and look what happened with COVID that's why there was the increase in suicides uh, of our children uh, because uh, we think that doctors uh, are in charge of life and death and you know it took me a while to figure it out but I realized I'm actually not <laughs> so so that's what's happened and so we've got when you turn away from God who's the creator of life you lose that so let's just go back because it's really important to to listen what what goes on. So, as you, as you as you re recounted, Pontius Pilate is interrogating Jesus Christ, and he says, you know, why are you here? What are you doing here? And so this these are the words of, of the truth, right? <laughs> the, the truth is a person. <laughs> My kinship is not of this world. For this I was born, and for this I have come into the world, to save the planet. No, to save the environment. No, to do social justice. No to bear witness to the truth. Everyone who is of the truth hears my word. And wow. then, as you said, Pontius Pilate then says, quid es veritas, what is truth? That's the birth of relativism. And relativism is there's my truth and there's your truth. I can become a woman if I just think it because, you know, that's my truth. And that's where we are today. It's in the Bible. And so that's why it's in the Bible. You, you, we learned that everything is in the Bible for a reason. It's to guide us through this time right now. And remember in John 8, 32, Jesus says, and you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. So if we knew the truth about COVID, the, the young people that weren't dying of COVID would have not been scared to death and had to put them out. I mean, so that, that's, that's what's going on. We've lost truth, so we've lost reality. And so we have to recognize that we are in a huge spiritual battle. It's not a conspiracy theory. What's going on is Satan has orchestrated this because man isn't that smart to do this. Right. We're in a huge spiritual battle over truth, truth in medicine, truth in faith, truth in everything. And so the way forward is to know who you're fighting and to know that only God, who actually already has defeated <laughs> Satan, um, uh, is, is really where we're at. So, uh, Father John Ricardo, I, I love what, what he says. Um, he says, you know, like in World War II, when they landed on Normandy uh, Beach, that was the end of World War II because, you know, you had to go through the battle bowls. You know, well, it's the same thing. When Jesus was incarnate, right, and we're, we're, you know, we're celebrating Advent right now, when Jesus was incarnate, that was the end. The devil was defeated. He didn't know that, but that was it. And, you know, and then that again, what, what does Jesus do? He defeats death. That's why there's all this untruth about the resurrection, all this untruth about the shroud turn. And guess what? When we go through this in, in, a, in, a, later, uh, in a later program, um, they're all linked together. They're linked to the Bible verses. It's linked to the truth of the Shroud of Turin. It is evidence of the resurrection. So death has been defeated. That's why that's in 1 Corinthians, St. Paul says. It's it, it's all connected. The Bible, <laughs> the Bible has the truth in it. Jesus is the truth, and he's the author of life. Remember, you know, I, you know he is the author of life. He's the life. I am the truth and he's the life. He's the author and, the and finisher author exactly. and finisher and of our faith. And, and he redeemed the, us. And he redeemed us. That was 
beginning of the plan from from the very beginning. And he, he's an author so, that he's an author that entered into his own book, and he right. is the author, yeah. and he is a finisher of our f faith. And here's yep. the thing: is the the song, the discordant notes that the woke uh, culture is singing to the to the children, especially, but to our world, is that song, that old song. Is that all? I guess I'm singing on my show today. My second, is that all, <laughs> is that all there is? Is that all there is? If that's all there is, then let's yeah. keep dancing. It's like sex, drugs, and rock and roll. Uh, that if there, if that's all there is, then 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 let's just go crazy. Um, and so the message, what's happened is, because there is a, because of the absence of truth, there's the absence of hope. And hope is yeah. one of the three theological virtues. It's in, it's it's um, infused by the Holy Spirit. I was uh, interviewed by Marcus Aubrey. They they're one of my longtime sponsors, the On It Supplements, great company. But he has a podcast, and he interviewed me about the virtues. And I and I mentioned the seven virtues, and he goes, he's he's trained as a philo in philosophy, and he said, well, there's really only four classic virtues: justice, temperance, fortitude, and uh, I forget, justice, self-mastery, fortitude, and prudence. And I said, well, the virtue of faith, hope, and love. And he goes, what? What are those? And I said, well, that, the <laughs> theological virtue is of hope. He goes, well, I really don't believe in hope. I think you got to take life by the throat and just, just choose to, to be valiant and just choose goals and accomplish them. Hope has nothing to do with it. <clears throat> That's what's happening in our world today is, is there's, there's no hope. Because there's a right. There's well, people, and, and, people and we've don't again lost reality. They don't. People that, don't believe in God, God, and they don't start right. with God, and so then it's right. Without that, right. you've lost your whole your whole. You, uh, you've lost it, and that's what happened. In, it, that's what happened. With, that's what happened with communism. See, man replaces God. It goes back to Genesis three. So what's happening now is the CDC is in, in, in charge of life or death. You know, uh, you can decide your sex, and so. No wonder they're they're committing suicide because again, it's it's tough playing God, right? When you're not God, right? It's yeah. tough to act like you're God that you can change. You know, I I, I would just joke. I guess I gotta I gotta go back and relook at genetics because I don't understand it because I thought every cell in your body was X X or X Y, but who knew you could just sit there and change? So when you unmoor people from reality, they lose it. And again, what we we also what's happened in our society is that is that for 500 years we've been working on this uh, this thing that that God isn't real and we created ourselves basically and so what we forget is that God created the material world and the immaterial world so life life is not from the material world so like I say as a as a physician is that uh, electrons spinning around protons and neutrons how do you get thought out of that how, how do, you, do get, you get you might get a brain get life out of that you might so get a brain again, but how do you get a mind yeah. how do you get a mind right exactly you four have a brain, billion but, years ago, yeah. 40 billion years ago the earth was rocks and water how do you get walking talking thinking rocks well we have that answer we have near-death experiences people who are clinically dead in other words they're getting cpr um, their brain's not working, their, uh, their uh, heart's not working. And the, the most interesting people are those who have, um, are blind from birth. So they have no yeah, neurons. Yeah, Dr. Spitzer goes through brain. a whole series of these yes. in his, yes. in his uh, series of books. Yes. We're talking with and, Dr. And, Scott French, and we will, when we come right back, we'll talk a little bit about, about that. It's, it's, it's just, just powerful um, and the way that he presents it too is also very scientific. It's not anecdotal. It is. It is. Uh, it's. It's stuff that's actually really been studied. And we're talking with Dr. Scott French, who's, who's with the Magis Center, is also an emergency room physician here and lives on the Big Island of Oahu, as well as a home up uh, in northern Idaho, near Montana. We'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak adventure. This is Daniel Boone Markham with another episode of Country Up. Disappointment. Dang it, honey, I'm sorry I messed up. Said that more times to my beautiful wife than I want to admit. Disappointed myself. Again. Disappointment. 
We all face it at one time or another, and some of us more times than others. Sure, we often get disappointed in politicians and sport heroes, even in friends and loved ones. But the most damaging kind of disappointment is disappointment in oneself. Hate it when that happens. Puts a real drag on my wagon. No man likes to face up to it. Takes humility, a.k.a. courage, for a man to say he's messed up. Yep. I dread disappointing my wife, my kids, but even more so my Lord. Done it way too many times. Good for me that my wife, my kids, and my Lord are all forgiven and forbearing. My wife moves on once I repent. I find it more difficult moving on even after repenting. I know it's dumb to beat myself up. Won't amount to much except more stupid. So, given we all face being disappointed especially in ourselves, what's one to do? The Psalms of King David help answer that question. That boy was a mighty warrior and a man after God's own heart. Yet he messed up big time more than once, serious like. And he hated it when he disappointed the Lord. Got down on himself real bad, but not for too long. Always rising up in faith, accepting the Lord's forgiveness and going on with his life. Suspect we should do the same. Just because you end up in the pig pen doesn't mean you got to waller in the mud. This is Daniel Baboon Markham at countryup.org on a journey a few miles this side of heaven. We invite our mama bears to join with us at deepadventure.com. You'll have access to all of the Long Ride Home TV shows even before they air on EWTN. Plus, three years of the shareable Ocean Sunrise daily catechism videos. Plus, at deepadventure.com, a 20% discount at our online store with all of our great t-shirts and clothes and books and rosaries and medals and all kinds of accessories. You'll also get an autographed copy of Bear's latest book, And for a limited time, a Catholic biker stuffed teddy bear. All at deepadventure.com. Come on, Mama Bears, let's hear you roar. Did you know that each Saturday morning you can receive the shareable YouTube video version of the Bear Wozniak Adventure in our inspiring weekly newsletter, even before it airs on the radio or hits the podcast apps? Never miss another episode. You can even binge watch Bear's inspiring guests. Think about the impact you can have sharing these videos with your friends. Go to deepadventure.com and click the subscribe button. Be the kind of man that when he gets out of bed in the morning, the devil says, oh no, he's up. Go to deepadventure.com and invite Bear to speak. Aloha. Welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We want to invite uh, everyone to go to our website, deepadventure.com, and subscribe to our weekly newsletter because if you subscribe, you get uh, the video, the YouTube version of our radio show, uh, emailed to you Saturday morning before it even airs on the on the radio on EWTN network that night and also uh, if you're if you're part of, you can also go to the YouTube channel Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure and subscribe we have so many things there we have the entire we have a whole three year series that goes through the entire Catholic catechism I'm usually standing by the beach uh, for 10 to 15 minutes uh, every morning uh, recording it and so it's a refreshing way to, to walk through the catechism together. So go to deepadventure.com, find out all that we have there, and go to our YouTube site, Bear Wozniak at Deep Adventure. You know, there's a, there's, we have doc with us Dr. Scott French, who's an emergency room physician, but also uh, part of the Magis Center uh, with Father Robert Spitzer, and uh, has been speaking around the country uh, on the concept of, of truth and the spiritual warfare surrounding truth. Um, you know, you, you think about it, there is no entropy when it comes to truth. You know, people talk about uh, how all the world, the universe seems to be, um, things seem to go towards confusion and decay. And you wonder, well, then how, how if, that's a, if that's a physical truth, if that's a, a uh, physics truth, how can there become a human being? Out of, out of, wouldn't, it, wouldn't it be the other way around? In fact, as a doctor, 
Dr. French sees people's bodies deteriorating and, and just wondering how is it that that we even have come to exist. We've replaced our talos, which is the phys- philosophical term for the true end, the true purpose that, that God has created you for. We've replaced it with the thought of entropy. And all that does is, is lead us into, into hopelessness and confusion. And so, uh, Dr. Scott French, tell us, tell us um, uh, more about how we can uh, really grasp truth. What, 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 what is the spiritual right. so, warfare? So, so again, what, what happens is, is people, again, confuse the material world from the immaterial world. So again, um, God created both. And in fact, it was a Catholic priest, uh, George Lemaitre, who worked with Einstein, right. mm-hmm. um, uh, who came up with what's called the Big Bang Theory. And what it basically was proven with the Hubble telescope, the, the idea was if if we live in an expanding universe, in other words, the galaxies are moving away from each other, you can rewind the clock. Well, sure enough, the Hubble telescope shows that galaxies are speeding, uh, you know, it's the universe is growing. And so they, you can rewind the clock 13.8 billion years ago, something outside of time and space, so God's outside of side of time and space, created the this Big Bang, which at the moment of the Big Bang, entropy uh the the speed of light the the gravitational fields the strong nuclear all those constants were set finely tuned such that the probability one of the stories they give is that it's it's like all the parts of a boeing 747 are in a junkyard and a um and a, a, a cyclone comes through, a tornado comes through, and at the end of that, you have a, a fully ready to fly 747. That's the probability of, of, of a universe, a life permitting universe. So again, that's, but that's just, the, that's just the material world. Then we get to the immaterial world, and so like the, 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 the um, angels and our minds are actually part of the immaterial world that are not part of the material. Yeah, yes, we have, we have a brain. Bodies, but we, but have we a, but it, it, it survives. So that was, let's finish the near-death experience. So, yes. so the people that are blind from birth, so they have material brains that have neurons, but then the people blind from birth, they have no neurons of sight because they've never seen the color red. They've never seen shoes. They've never seen a window seal. They've never so. So one of my favorite stories, and there's thousands of these across the country, uh, across the world, and, and and validated by medical, uh, by scientists, by and, and, and let's and say this, it's a very important, uh, because of our own commitment to truth, that a good place to su- to find this information is in Father Robert Spitzer's, Spitzer's books yeah, that have been, that, that, that so, I, I just so, need, to, I need to finish the statement. I need to finish the statement. I really want people to know we're not to, because we're on EWTN and we have a tremendous commitment to truth. Um, Dr. Robert Spitzer, of course, appears on EW10 in his series of books. In one of his series of books, he talks about these near-death experiences, and he does it in a very scientific way. There's a lot of things, anecdotal things out there, but he's he's parsed it down and, and worked with areas that we know are are, are valid. And so um, right. I had to right. say that, Scott, to, to give us the veracity because we are talking about truth. Go ahead. Uh, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. <clears throat> there is truth. It's not relative. <laughs> so, so um so in this one of the that's the, my favorite case there's several of them that he talks about and there's several you know studies again across the world um that uh, this person blind from birth uh, floats out of his body just like how jesus you know floats through the upper room floats through the hospital uh, walls thro- floats outside the hospital on the fourth floor of this hospital again and sees again blind from birth He's his, his, he's undergoing CPR, so his brain's not working, his heart's not working, uh, but he sees a pair of red sneakers on the outside of a windowsill. And when he comes back, they he tells this to the you know the people that you know he's having the surgery done, and, you know, and and they go, yeah, right. And guess what? They're there, and there yeah. are thousands of these studies verified by scientists across the world. And, and as, as an actor, and I know uh, Father Spitzer's had the same experience, almost every time I give a talk where there's more than 30 people, someone comes up with the same, same uh, with a, a similar story, a relative mm-hmm. or whatever. Mm-hmm. And again, the ones that we're talking about have been scientifically validated. And then mm-hmm. children, they see 
dead relatives and they say, well, who's Aunt Maude? Well, she died 100 years ago. They didn't know about it. And what's fascinating about all of these cases is that every single one of these people lose their fear of death because they realize that there's something better, that this earth is not our home. It's our temporary home. Our real home's in heaven. Well, and that's but, really, but, but I want to ask about that because it's not necessarily true that everybody's home is in heaven. It's intended to be in heaven. Right, right. So there are people that have uh, bad experiences too. So right, I mean, yeah. Well, actually, there are there are actually a stories of uh, there were actually um, stories. Again, hasn't I haven't seen the validation, but there are stories of people, uh, ISIS fighters on the battlefield that were near death and had an experience of of hell and then converted to Christianity. Mm -hmm. So whether that's true or not, but there, there there are stories like that. But the ones that are validated are the ones that have the good stories. Well, and so I go back to. Yeah, so I go back to um, Dr. Nietzsche. You know, I go back to Nietzsche in his last statement um, at his death. I believe he said, oh, mother, I'm a fool. You know, he was a great yeah. atheist. He was a powerful thinker, powerful yeah. wordsmith, um, unfortunately quite lost. And I believe his last words, as he was in the, he he ended up in an insane asylum. I feel his la those were his last words. So right. yeah, there, is, there, is, there is the truth of redemption that we, we um, but... Um, there is a heaven and there is a hell. It's appointed a man once to live, once to die, and then, and then the judgment. So, so what does this tell us? So we have a brain, but the human soul, our mind, our will, and our emotions, I would say that is the suke, the soul of a man, um, is different than the body mechanics. With their, the, 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 the mind uses the organism of the brain, but when, when, that, when, that, when the body dies, of course, eventually will be it will be resurrected then then the mind and the will and the emotion continues and the spiritual soul of that that is the spiritual soul of that person so, so the soul and the soul you know again we're in soul bodies is how it's you know thomas aquinas and the rest of it explain it we're in soul bodies and, and and frankly back to father spitzer i consider him a modern day thomas aquinas just yes. with a better sense of humor <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, i'm not sure thomas aquinas did a great, sense, yeah, but father great. Spitzer, he, he's funny he's great he's great he's a great presenter so so um so uh, yeah so again it's back to god created the material and the immaterial world so so obviously the angels they have thought and, and just like we know, you know, thought is immaterial. So we actually have experience. So you can't see it, but it exists. And that gets back to what is science. Science, science is about observation. So, and so back up for a second. The only reason we can do science is because God created an ordered world, right? If there are natural laws, just like you mentioned, entropy and all those. Okay, so we got to take. So you can, we you can only perform science when there is an ordered natural. So we got to take a break. We got to take a break. Uh, doc, we're talking with yeah. Dr. Scott French. Yeah, it's true that it, it, it is because of um, the the monotheistic God of of the Jews and the, and uh, and our understanding of of God as Christians of Trinity. It's because there isn't some pantheon of of uh, of some sort of soap opera of gods in the world, you know, uh, the big ones and the little ones that are all controlling and confusing everything. It is because there is a God, there is only one God who created the universe that we can do science. If there wasn't one God, and there was a confused melee up there, and there wasn't um, the this uh, the God who created the universe with design, we couldn't even do science. And so I was out golfing the other day, and someone asked me, well, you know, I'm kind of confused about Jesus. Me and Jesus, I'm kind of confused because I have this conflict between science and faith. So we'll talk about that with Dr. Scott French when we come back with the Bear Wozniak adventure. People love our EWTN TV show, Long Ride Home with Bear Wozniak. Thanks to you, the show has won four different Tally Awards. And now, instead of waiting each week for the next episode to air, you can actually binge watch our show and even share it with your friends when you go to deepadventure.com and join the Mama Bears or the Man Cave. Along with all the other benefits, you get total access to all the seasons of our aired episodes, plus instant access to episodes that won't even air for several months. Long Ride Home with Bear Wastick, a great way to communicate the gospel in a gritty enough way that even tough men will stop and watch at deepadventure.com. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for underwriting 
the Bear Wozniak Adventure on EWTN. Notre Dame Federal Credit Union provides car loans, mortgages, SBA loans, and depository accounts nationwide, as well as 24-hour support. Go to deepadventure.com to find their link or go to NotreDameFCU.com. Mahalo to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for making the Bear Wozniak Adventure possible. When you go to the Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure YouTube channel, you get access to all of our free playlists, including hundreds of episodes of the Bear Wozniak Adventure, plus the three-year journey through the whole catechism in our Ocean Sunrise Catechism series. And you even get short clips and live streaming of Bear and Cindy's Adventures in Paradise videos. Go to YouTube and subscribe to the Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure channel. still listening i thought we warned you to change to an easy listening station while well, you asked for it here is more of the bear wasnick adventure aloha welcome back to the bear wasnick adventure our guest today is dr scott french he's an emergency room physician he lives on the island of the big island of 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 hawaii where the volcano has been blowing lately and uh, he also works with the Magis Center. Uh, I want to invite everybody, something special uh, for the men, to go to deepadventure.com and become a member of uh, the Man Cave and Bear School of Manliness. Um, it, you can be part of a group of men who we get together once a month for our Zoom calls. And then we, uh, and then we have this 36-month curriculum that you go through about all the different areas of manliness. But what I'm really particularly excited about is that it's a place where a father can become a member uh, and a son can get a, a login capability, not to be part of the man cave, but can participate in the curri curriculum in the School of Manliness with his father. It's a great way for fathers to teach their sons um, all the different things about manliness. It's not just written, it's video, it's audio, it's all kind of things. And one of our teachers uh, for that, on that uh, site, is Dr. Scott French. So, Dr. Scott French, tell us, we were talking about, we, we get rolling and it's hard to, to know when to really, uh, there's just so much to talk about. But you were talking about how um, because of our, our understanding of God, there being only one God, we can do science. Right, so, so God... It, 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 we're in, made in the image of God, which means we have a rational mind. And that's, as we were talking about earlier, as Barry and I were talking about earlier, we've lost sense with reality. And that's why that unmoors people. That's why people want to commit suicide, because we, you know, we have that soul in us that has that rationality you know the soul is rational and so so when you try to confuse it with <laughs> listening to false teachers that's what that's why there's that's why we're there, it's such despair uh, and the suicides and the drug overdoses and all that because we've un become unmoored against uh, reality and you know what, because, what I, again God is truth and that is reality and I would say you know there's there's gonna come a time when they, right now atheism is cool but everyone's gonna find it's leading them to the to dis to destruction there's gonna right. be a time when people are gonna say hey the Empire Emperor isn't wearing any clothes <laughs> You know, right, what he's saying right. is well, true. No, and, 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 and it's the, already starting to happen with COVID and all that. Started, Again, we want people, yeah. They're starting, there's, so, going to, there's going to be a kickback and, and people are going to want to come. They need to go someplace to, okay, well, that, I think that maybe there is a God. They need to come someplace where we can first approach them with philosophical truth, uh, like right. uh, Thomas Aquinas' five uh, proofs for, of the existence of God from reason. And then we can bring them scripture. But what I love about what Father Robert Spitzer does, and Dr. Scott French is involved with the Magis Center, is he talks about, we've been talking about the, the fact that a person is, it, you aren't a soul that has a body. You're a, you're a person that is, bo is body and soul. You're, it's, 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 it's a, it's a, it's a compile, you're united to that. But Father Robert Spitzer, and, then, and so we say we have a mind, a will and emotion, a mind, will, and emotion, which would be part of our soul, um, and we uses the the body, you know, the it, uh, the the mind uses the, the the brain, the organism of the brain, to function in this material world. But I love what Father what Father Robert Spitzer says, that the soul has an upward yearning for for uh, justice, 
for beauty, for truth, um, uh, and for home, and, and for home, and, I, and, yeah. I, and, I, and there, there's a there's a, a desire for love, and then I love what you just said because the most coolest part of that is when he says there's an upward yearning for home, yeah. and when you throw all of that away, you just leave people with no hope at all because all this upward yearning is in us. It's like, I mean, I I would never really be longing for a Big Mac if I had never known they existed or ne never had one. <laughs> But we have in our in our in our very nature, not an upward yearning for a Big Mac or the spaghetti monster in the sky. We have an upward yearning for all these attributes of God. And when you say God doesn't exist, that person has to eventually come crashing down because yet there is that that hope, and they take and you take away that hope, people come, become hopeless and become and it becomes right. chaotic. Right. Right. And we used to speak with one voice, but what happened with the Reformation is that we then split into many voices. And so remember in John 17, when Jesus prays that we be as one so that, you know, it shows that there is a God. Well, that's where we are today because we have people that um, have split away. So, Scott, we've, we've, we know there's a crisis of truth. Uh, what is the what is our solution? Right. So we, we know that there is truth. We know that God is truth. And we have rational minds created by God. So the immaterial mind that we have uh, is was also created by God. And we're in soul bodies, just like Bear was saying. So, so, they, so we now know that with these near-death experiences, that the soul survives bodily death. So then the next phase is does the body, as Jesus says, you know, it does? Does it resurrect? Mm. And so um, we'll get into that into another uh, into another segment. But that you know, again, there is truth, and there is one truth. And since since the Reformation, what's happened is we don't speak with one voice. Remember, in John seventeen, Jesus prays that we speak with one voice, and we don't speak with that one we, voice. That we may be one. The priest, the priestly prayer of Christ, Father, may they be one. Yeah, yeah. And that and brings we, confusion. And, yeah. And, and, and we don't do that. And even within Catholicism, we don't speak with one voice. So, um, you know, when you call ch killing a child reproductive health, that's not speaking the truth. So it's very interesting. So that's, it's so that's very that's interesting how sa Satan, now going back to the spiritual warfare, how Jesus uh, is the living word. You know, right. he's the word he's of the God. the living word, right. And I, and, I, I, I love And he's the light, both figuratively and literally when we go in at, at some point when we go through the shroud the image on the shroud that it looks it's one of the uh, one of the solutions of how did this image get on the upper six microns which is the width of a human hair um we would take it six to eight billion watts of pure laser light energy over one forty billionth of a second and so um so he literally is the light of the world both in truth and um, and um, and creation. Yeah, so, there's more. Yeah. It would take more power than all of the lasers that exist in the world today to do. That's right. The Shroud of Turin. That's right. It's, uh, and you can find yeah. that in Dr. Robert Spitzer's book. But when we say Jesus is the Word, it's very it's very important that he's before he was called Jesus here on earth, he's known as the second person of the Trinity, the Son of God, the Word. As John said, in the beginning is of the was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God and through him all things came to be coming back to the creation of the earth but there are two right. gentlemen that were great friends one was um, J.R.R. Tolkien and C.S. Lewis uh, J.R.R. Tolkien was a I think the word is philologist he loved words and he and he, he said that every word has a whole history to it and to distort that word is to distort history and C.S. Lewis was a linguist. And so, to, and so together they really did a battle uh, uh, to protect words. Words are so important because when you distort words, you've, you distort the truth. And so when you can say a man is a woman, or when you can say, like you said earlier, if you call this Planned Parenthood when it's quite the opposite of Planned Parenthood, or if you can call this legislation the... the uh, you know, reproductive what is it? health. Yeah, yeah, and things like that. When you start distorting words like that, um, it's it's actually an attack on the person of Jesus Christ, and that's why I look right. at it because He is yeah. the Word. The beautiful thing about the Word, and we're going to talk about this in two, in our next say in our next uh, episode, 
is the word of God to a Catholic. We receive him in the liturgy, the, during the, during the uh, liturgy of the word at Mass. But we actually physically receive the body, blood, soul, and divinity of the word when we receive the Eucharist. So in our, some of our next segments, we're going to talk about the miracle of the Eucharist, Eucharistic miracles. And we're going to talk about um, the Shroud of Turin and and visit other things like that with our guest, Dr. Scott French. The word you use, the words that you, you speak to your mind, the word, the word that, the, the, that Satan takes and twists, you know, in every truth, every lie is mingled with a little bit of truth. The battle, the spiritual battle that's raging is over the word. It's, it's, it's the use of words yeah. Yeah. And, that, yeah. and, and, and it's attack against Jesus. How can people find you, Dr. Dr. Scott? Well, you just contact me through the Maja Center. Um, oh. That's the, that's the best way. It's, so it's uh, Scott at MajaCenter dot com. So how um, do you spell Maja Center? M a g i s and then Center C e n t e r Maja Center dot com. It's so and beautiful. That's and that's Father it's, Spencer's site. And it's and it's um, and, 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 yeah. and back to your point. Well, we uh, have to John, take, we, we we have to cut away. But I was just want to say, and the Maja Center uh, is based on the Magi, right? The 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 wisdom. So, and it is it is our yeah, time of yeah, Christmas. Yeah. Go ahead or and make your point. Okay. Go ahead and make that last point, and we'll and we'll sneak it in. Uh, okay, is John's the other other issue about truth that you said about wordsmithing is Gnosticism, and that's really what John's oh, gospel gosh. is about. He's yes. fighting Gnosticism uh, because that's the secret knowledge. The secret knowledge that hey, you can change your sex. That that's Gnosticism. We're we're back to the first century fighting Gnosticism. Yeah. Excellent. Well, we've, we've been very happy to have Dr. Scott French with us as a guest, and we're going to have him back for uh, uh, with some other episodes. We very rarely have a returning guest, but Scott's a, Scott's a good man. He works with Dr. Spitzer, and uh, he's a good friend. So till next week, you want to do this with me. You know how to do the aloha. You, Dr. Scott will do this with me from the Big Island, and I'm here in, in Oahu. Yeah. May the breath <laughs> of the Holy Spirit aloha you. Aloha. Aloha. <laughs> Thanks for listening to the Bear Wasting Adventure. Find more manly conversation at the Bear Wasting Deep Adventure YouTube channel. Subscribe and ring the bell.